things called fluorescence guidance. All right. And this is some of the coolest stuff. Um, I was this top image is something called fluorescein, sodium fluorescein, which is about $15 a vial. It's been around since the 1940s. Uh, it was used in retinal surgery. And I brought this in originally when I was at Columbia. Um, and the way it works is it basically you give it an IV and it leaks through the blood brain barrier, which is disrupted in, in gliomas mm -hmm. and certain malignancies. Um, and when you shine a light on it, it excites the uh, fluorescein, which is leached down into the tissue, and it, it fluoresces, and it fluoresces this bright green color. Um, and you can operate under this coloration. You identify your tumor, and you can remove all this safely. The problem with fluorescein is it tends to bleed out in the surrounding tissue, especially as you operate, because the edema, um, it disrupts the brain barrier, and there's leaking and things like that. If you think about it, since it's extracellular, it kind of flows with normal kind of um, extracellular flow. And so out of Germany, they came up with this pink dye, which is called 5-ALA. 5-ALA um, is a, it's a proto drug, really. You give it, it's part of the heme biosynthesis pathway, which I don't know how familiar you guys are with, but it basically uh, makes protoporphyrin 9, which is a fluorescent um, byproduct. And for some reason, gliomas, certain meningiomas, certain metastases retain this more so than other uh, cells in the body. The other cells clear it. And so here you shine a blue light on and you can see the tumor lights up this bright red color. And all of a sudden you, you now can say, all right, well, well, we know how to map the brain with our navigation. Um, now we can map the tumor, right? And we can go through this and we can say, all right, now we're just taking a tumor. But you guys can see when you look at the surface of the brain with this tumor underneath it, these are the same pictures. It's not always easy, right, to find your boundary, right? And so all of a sudden we have this intraoperative tool that allows us to, to you know, focus on this. And this stuff's um, pretty amazing. Well, we've looked at this in, in large series at this point. And what we found is that it helps us increase the volume of resection, which we know uh, increases progression-free and overall survival in brain tumor patients, okay? Um, and that's been proven. It has an incredible positive predictive value, meaning that when it's red, it's tumor, all right? You can be almost you know, sure of that. Um, the difficult part comes when it's not red, and that's the negative predictive value. It doesn't have a great not negative predictive value. And the reason for that is a, is a lot of things. Um, you know, tumor cells infiltrate. Um, I always give the analogy of, of a plate of spaghetti and meatballs, right? It's very easy to take out the meatballs, but if you had to get all the spaghetti sauce off, you're going to leave some. You're going to leave probably a lot, right? And that's how gliomas are in particular. And so just because it's not red doesn't necessarily mean there's not tumor. And we've kind of pushed the envelope here and not just talk about resection of a tumor now, we talk about something called a supramaximal resection, all right? And there's actually decent evidence now out of Miami that if you can achieve a supramaximal resection, meaning extending beyond the boundary of what you see on an MRI, you're actually gonna further increase someone's survival, someone's outcomes, okay? But you gotta do that safely, all right? And that's where our advances in imaging come into play. Everyone, Ryan Rad here from neurosurgerytraining.org. If you like that video, subscribe and donate to keep our content available for medical students across the world.